Okay, we're finally reaching the end of chapter 7, the chapter that would not end. Classifying chemical reactions. Um, like many things, you can use different approaches to classifying things. You know, when you were in kindergarten, you may have been given some, some blocks or shapes and asked to categorize them. Well, you can categorize them by their color or by their shape or by their size, or what material they're made out of. And so a block may be a cube and red and made out of plastic. And it's got three classifications, but it's only one block. So with chemical reactions, we have multiple ways of classifying them. So we could have a reaction that's an oxidation reduction reaction. It's a combustion <clears throat> reaction. Um, well, anyway, it could, it could be more than one combination. So one way to classify reactions is by looking at what happens. And so looking at what happens, um, one, one classification is precipitation. So we observe the reaction and we see, oh, a precipitate forms. This is a precipitation reaction. Um, an acid-base reaction, um, perhaps not as easy to just flat out observe, but we can observe that the pH has changed, it, that the acid or base has been neutralized. Gas evolution reactions. These often, you see bubbles or smell something. You can observe what happens that a gas is being evolved. And then oxidation reduction reactions. Again, observing those is a, is a little more subtle than some of the others. Combustion reactions are a subcategory of oxidation reduction reactions. So these are classification based on what's ha what happens in the reaction. Which one is neutralization reaction? Acid base. Acid base. Um, we can also classify reactions by looking at what the atoms are doing. And so these are the, the four categories that your book gives. Um, the first one is a synthesis reaction or a combination. <clears throat> Um, and here what we do, instead of looking at the reaction happen physically, we look at the equation for it. And we see that we have two different product, two different reactants, sorry, A plus B, and we end up with one product. So those two things are combining into one thing. You're synthesizing this new thing. So it's called synthesis or combination. You need to know both of those words. The way you recognize it is it has one product. Kind of the opposite of that is a decomposition reaction. These are easy to recognize because you have one reactant and more than one product. So you have one substance and it's coming apart. It's decomposing. Okay. Um, a displacement, some books call this a single displacement. And this is what that question um, on the equation sheet that you were asking me about. This is a single displacement reaction. Um, actually, let's, let's skip that one. Let's talk about double displacement because we've talked about this already. This is the one where you have this couple A and B going to the party and C and D going to the party and they end up switching partners. So that's a double displacement reaction because two people, two species, two ions are being displaced. So A came in with B, A leaves with D. So B got displaced. D came in with C. D got displaced and leaves with A. Double displacement. So the displacement, which is, I've usually seen it called a single displacement, is where you have an element reacting with a compound. And you form a different compound and a different element. And so the analogy here is that A is going to the party by himself. B and C went on a date. And they get there and they mingle around and they discover that A and C have a great deal of attraction for each other and so they leave together and B leaves by himself. So here only one ion has been displaced. So that's single displacement. So when you look at the equation and classify in this manner, this, the single displacement, you're going to have an element and a compound as reactant and product. Okay. 
And that's what that last one, um, silver nitrate plus zinc. <coughs> silver nitrate's a compound. Zinc is an element. And what's going to happen is that zinc is going to replace the silver in that compound, and silver will be left as an element. And so you can predict what the formula of zinc nitrate will be because you can predict the charge of zinc from the periodic table. So now we're going to look at these a little more in depth. In a synthesis reaction, we've got two simpler substances combining. I, I prefer to call it a combination reaction. But. Um, so in this example, we've got um, sodium metal and chlorine gas, and they're going to combine uh, fairly violently and form sodium chloride. So we, ha we started with two different substances, and we end up with only one substance. It's a combination or a synthesis reaction. In a decomposition reaction, um, the opposite happens. You have one compound that decomposes. And so here's an illustration of a very simple apparatus, which you could do at home. Um, a 9-volt battery in a cup of water. The electric current causes the water to decompose. You started out with H2O, and the electric current causes it to decompose into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. So one reactant, two products. Displacement or single displacement, one element displaces another. So in this example, we have copper chloride, copper 2 chloride here. <laughs> and you put a piece of zinc metal in it and the zinc will become an ion and um, pair up with the chlorine, the chloride and the copper will deposit onto the zinc. So you can stick a, a piece of zinc in a copper chloride solution and it will deposit copper on it without any electricity <coughs> or anything, it'll just happen. It's kind of cool. Double displacement We've done lots of examples of these. These are the switching partners. Um, and several different kinds of reactions fall into this category. So you can have, so let's write on this. Um, precipitation reactions are double displacement. The two ionic compounds, you swap the ions, and you see that one of them is insoluble. That's a precipitation reaction. An acid-base reaction. We looked at how we can take the, the acid, which is hydrogen ion, and another ion. The base is some metal and a hydroxide ion. You swap the partners, you end up with water and salt. Gas evolution reactions can also be... Um, double displacement reactions. And those were things that involved um, carbonates and sulfates and ammonium compounds. And you switch the partners and you end up with carbonic acid or sulfurous acid or ammonium hydroxide and then you have to recognize, oh yeah, that decomposes into something else. So that some of those gas evolution reactions are, um, are, are uh, double displacement reactions also. I know. And if anyone else wants to hear that again, they can go on YouTube and listen to it. The noises from the crowd, yeah, get on there. So that, that's why I'm laughing. I could edit it out, but I don't have that kind of time. So here's a, here's a classification flowchart, uh, chemical reactions. Um, this is the... Uh, classifying them by what the atoms are doing. So we can classify them as synthesis. Again, that's uh, one product. Decomposition is one reactant. Single displacement, you have a compound and an element. And the double displacement, you have two compounds. So what you need to be able to do is classify reactions. So here's our example. Classify each of these 
I give multiple choice exams and so you'll have you know a multiple choice list such as synthesis, decomposition, single displacement, or double displacement, and you have to choose. So this first one, aluminum plus phosphoric acid gives aluminum phosphate and hydrogen gas. Replacement. Single replacement. Single replacement. Okay, because here we have an element, and here we have an element. The element aluminum is taking hydrogen's place in the compound. So that's single displacement. Single displacement. Okay, what's the next one? Double. Double replacement. Here we have a compound and another compound. And we see that the copper switched partners for the product. And the potassium switched partners. And so this is a double displacement. Let's see if I can write today. Letter C. Combination. Combination or synthesis. We have two elements, potassium and bromine. They're combining and forming a compound, one compound. And so this is the choices that were given listed synthesis. And then the last one, as you just said, is decomposition because we have one reactant and more than one product. <coughs> So if, if you can get clear in your head what these terms mean, recognizing these from their reactions, is, it shouldn't be that hard. Phew, end of chapter 7. So you guys are always asking me for a study guide. There it is right there, chapter and review. More stuff. Chemical skills, that's the list of what you should be able to do should be able to identify a chemical reaction. You should be able to predict precipitation reactions, um, identify redox reactions, classify chemical reactions. Good stuff. Now, I don't know why this is here, but let's do it. Predict the products and write a balanced molecular equation. Okay, so let's look at this. What do we have? We have two ionic compounds, right? So how do we predict what the products are? What do ionic compounds that are aqueous do in solution? They come apart into ions, right? So copper nitrate, it says, is aqueous. So we're going to, down here, we're going to write the formulas for the two ions. We know that nitrate is minus one charge because we memorized that. And we have to figure out the charge on copper because it's one of those transition metals. Two nitrate ions, this must be plus two. Over here we've got ammonium, NH4, that's plus, you're supposed to memorize that one. And sulfide is from the periodic table. So ionic compounds that are aqueous, they separate into ions and the ions swim around. When we mix these two together, we have this potential for this partner swapping. This, this is a double displacement reaction. So what we have to see is, is there chemistry between the other two partners? So we rearrange them. So we put the copper and the sulfide together and we put the ammonium and the nitrate together. And then we have to see are those soluble or insoluble in water? Now you don't have to memorize that, but we have to look it up in the table. So ammonium nitrate, ammonium compounds are all soluble and nitrate compounds are all soluble. Ammonium nitrate is soluble. Copper sulfide. I don't remember this off the top of my head. Maybe you guys don't either. Anybody have the chart? No? I'm pretty sure it's insoluble. So we'll just go with that. Copper and sulfide. I think most of the sulfides were insoluble. It is sol insoluble? Okay, thank you. I'd hate to do this incorrectly on YouTube, right? So one of these is a solid. Um, it's insoluble. 
If they were both soluble, we would just write no reaction because it's just mixing and it's not a chemical reaction, it's just a physical change. But this one's a solid, so now we have to write the formulas for the products. That one's a solid, and this one is aqueous. Yeah. So we predicted the products. Now we have to balance the equation. <coughs> if in these double replacement reactions, the, those polyatomic ions are going to be intact. We see we have nitrate on the left and nitrate on the right. If you get into a gas evolution reaction, sometimes they're not intact anymore. So you have to be, be careful for that. Um, so we've got one copper and one sulfur on the left. We've got one copper and one sulfur on the right. We have two nitrates and two ammoniums on the left. You see that? So if we stick a two right here, then it's going to be balanced. A uh, subscript of three where? Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, it's not NH3, it's NH4. How does it break into water? So water? You don't you don't change the subscripts. I, I just made a, a brain fart mistake there. The NH4 is a bundle pack. It's a polyatomic ion. It all stays together. It came in with, uh, what it was, I was talking about ammonium, right? Ammonium came in with sulfur and is going to hang out with nitrate now. So it's just switching who it's hanging out with. It's still NH4+. Plus. I just copied it down wrong, and thank you for catching that. The, the subscripts... Let's change color here. These subscripts are not conserved in the chemical reaction. Just because it has a subscript of two, there were two nitrates, doesn't mean that in the new compound it will be a subscript of two. That has to do with the charges. Over here we have plus one, minus one, and so we just need one of each. The reason they had subscripts of two over there was we had a plus two and a minus one, and so we needed two of these guys to balance the charge. So the charge on the ions doesn't change in a double replacement reaction, and you use those charges to create the formulas for the compounds. There's a lot of little things that all have to come together to do a problem like this. Any other questions? I have no idea what the next slide is. Oh, it's another example. Anything to, to avoid doing new stuff, right? Predict the products and write a balanced molecular equation. Silver nitrate and sodium chloride. What are these going to do? They're going to swap partners. So under silver nitrate, we write Ag plus and NO3 minus. And over here we have Na plus and Cl minus. They're going to swap partners. So these two and those two. We end up with Ag plus and Cl minus and sodium and nitrate. Then you go to the table of solubility rules. And you see that chloride compounds are generally soluble except silver chloride. So this is going to be a solid. Sodium compounds are soluble. Nitrate compounds are soluble. So this one's soluble. <coughs> Is that one balanced now? Yeah, we got one silver on each side, one chloride on each side, one nitrate on each side, one sodium on each side. Done.